But my name is Professor Shannon and I'm Professor of Obstetrics based at King's College in London and I work at Guy's and St Thomas's NHS Trust. So this video clip is to prepare students for their Objective Structured Clinical Exams, otherwise known as OSCEs at the end of the year. But obviously anyone who deals with pregnant women can uh, learn from this. Okay, there are different aspects to examination and depending on what you're asked, it may be that you're expected to do um, other things like check for anemia, check for edema, uh, do the blood pressure, the urine, but this particular video is about the abdominal palpation, but you mustn't forget the other aspects. Okay, so this is uh, Maria Costas, who's very kindly agreed to help us demonstrate how to examine an abdomen. So hello Maria. Hi. Um, I'm Professor Shannon, and what I'm going to do, just over the next two or three minutes, is have a feel of your baby, and just check all as well, so we can see how big it is, which way the baby's lying, and make sure there are no problems. Anytime you're not comfortable or you want me to stop, just say, not a problem. Okay. Um, we're not going to do any internal examinations or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to feel your tummy um, and make sure everything's all, all right today. And at the end, I'll explain to you what I found. Mm -hmm. You happy? Yes. Okay. Now, the first thing um, is, are you comfortable? Yeah. Okay, you're, yeah, quite, yeah. you're quite happy lying like that. Yes. What I'm going to do, actually, is move you to tilt just a little bit towards me, maybe putting a, a, a towel here, that's fine, that's all that's, all that's needed, how's that? Yeah. If you feel unusual at any time or strange, just let me know and you can always move. You don't, don't have to stay like this, but it won't take long. The next thing I want to do is just have a look at your tummy. So would you mind pulling this right up okay. so we can get a good look? That's perfect. And maybe you could um, push your lower parts down so we can see the whole of your tummy without difficulty. Can, can you lower your pants just a little bit? Is that all right? Great. All right. Now, I'm just going to look at your tummy to start with. Okay. Um, and actually, what we can see very clearly here, there's some little stretch marks here, known as stri gravidarum. And the other thing is that um, Maria has a sort of pigmentation line here known as Lydia Nigra, slightly everted um, umbilicus, um, but that's all quite normal. And there's a clear swelling here, um, which is kind of consistent with a pregnancy towards um, the end of the third trimester. And actually, looking very carefully, we can actually see some movements there. And Maria, you can feel the baby move, can't you? Yes. So we know that the baby's alive. Um, it doesn't tell us how well it is, but it's, a, it's a clearly a sign of uh, viability. You can always ask the mother that. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually measure how the size of the uterus, which is an indicator of how big the baby is. As long as there isn't something else making it big, that's a good correlation between the growth of the baby. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to feel very gently, right from the top here, underneath your rib cage, from the zipper sternum. All the time, I'm keeping an eye on Maria's face, make sure she's happy. Mm -hmm. And when I get a feel for the top of the uterus, I'm going to place the tape measure. I'm going to place it so that the zero end, which is blinded, appears at the top. So from the top of the zipper sternum to the top of the fundus, very gently rest it where the fundus is, without any pressure, right down to the top of the pubic bone. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a measurement, and that's 37 centimeters, and that's consistent with the number of weeks you are. How many weeks are you now, Marie? 30, uh, 40 plus 40. So 40. So that, that's within limits at term, and we're happy that that's a normal size baby. Okay.
what we're going to do next is actually um, feel the baby. All right. So I'm going to very gently just check the baby's lying all right. So I actually grab this baby and very gently, just in half a minute or so, work, work my way around and check that this baby is lying up and down, so longitudinally. And this can be a little bit uncomfortable, Maria, so don't worry, it's only going to take a moment. I'm going to check that the baby's head is down there and it's nice and firm and hard, so that to me is a head and I can feel most of the head, but it's stuck in there and firm, so I've judged that that is three-fifths palpable. Okay, so that's the engagement, the presentation, and the lie all determined. I also know from feeling that this is, I can feel the baby's parts, so the fluid is normal, it's not excessive, but it's still got a nice sort of cystic round feel to it, so it's not reduced either. So we get some idea of the fluid. I also know that the baby's more lumpy on this side, more smooth on that side, so I think that the shoulder's over this side. Um, so I get an idea of the way the baby's looking, the position of the baby, and that gives me clues as to um, where we're starting from in terms of um, before going into labour. So we've had a look, um, we've checked for things like there aren't any scars, um, anything else unusual as well. We've had a feel, we've determined the way the baby's lying, and next um, we want to actually have a listen. Now we know the baby's alive, we've seen it move, we know that um, Maria, Maria can feel the baby, but actually we can also listen, which tells us the same information. Now this is a penile stethoscope. Maria, I'm just going to gently put this on the baby so I can hear the heartbeat. Uh, you won't be able to hear it, but I can show you afterwards. I think the anterior shoulder is there, so I'm going to go below the umbilicus off to the left, place my ear on here, let go so there's no extraneous sounds, and I'm listening for a little tapping in the distance, and that's very clear and very normal. What actually is nice is to use an electronic one, like this, so we turn it on, listen in the same place, and we get a nice... Hear that, Maria? We finished, we've got an idea of the way the baby's lying and all's well where the head is. Um, we're going to just cover up, make sure that you're right. Yeah. Okay, and can I help you back up a bit? Now, Marie, at the moment, everything's fine. Baby's in the correct position, feels a good size, no problems at all. Have you got any questions you want to ask me? Um, no, everything's okay. I can hear the heart. Good. Yeah, thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. So the very first part of um, the OSCE is to introduce yourself, and that means uh, giving your full name, who you are, um, make sure you know the woman's name and address her appropriately and formally. Obviously, if you know her, you may be on for first uh, name terms and so on. Um, but certainly as an introduction to a stranger, you want to be conservative and formal. That is what is expected, at least until you've established a relationship. When one is examining a pregnant woman, I think you have to uh, go the extra mile to make sure the woman knows exactly what it is that you're going to do. Um, unlike many other patients, a pregnant woman as well, the expectation is that she's going to remain well and she may have no idea what it is you're about to attempt. So you make it, a, make it very clear how long you're going to take, that she can bail out at any time and ask you to stop, um, that you're only going to feel her abdomen and check the baby, you're not going to do any internal examinations and so on. It's also wise to have a chaperone with you at all times, even if you're female, um, the reason being is that it's not just to protect you or to protect the woman, but it's good practice, there's someone there, it gives reassurance that everything's above board and appropriate and it's something that should always happen. So positioning is very important. Um, the woman should be comfortable, essentially on a bed um, that has had a 30 or 45 degree angle and she's feeling comfortable, then that's about correct. There is. Um, one element which you should avoid is that if a woman in the third trimester that has a large uh, mass 
essentially sitting on her inferior vena cava, she's going to feel uh, giddy at times if the venous return is reduced to her heart. So the very slightest tilt will prevent that. So two things, you must tell the woman to tell you at any time if she's feeling um, dizzy or wants to move because she may not feel that she's allowed to. And secondly, actually creating the slightest tilt, either with a little wedge or even just something simple like a pillow or towel, will essentially prevent this happening without compromising your ability to assess the abdomen. So correct position is important. The next thing is exposing the abdomen. So you want to take time to make sure that you do this appropriately. At the same time, you must make sure that the woman is comfortable maintaining her dignity. So there is a little bit of a conflict there. And the way you do that is very important. So actually, the best thing is to ask the woman herself to draw up her clothing right down to just below the breasts and to put down her clothing to the top of her thighs so that you don't miss anything, including scars that may be beneath the hairline and so on. So you need to spend time um, making sure that she's comfortable with the situation, but also explaining why it is you have to expose adequately. The next part is actually observation. You need to have a look um, and take in all the information, and it's very easy to miss things. So you take time just looking at the swelling. You may determine if the baby's moving, that tells you the baby's viable. Um, the mother can tell you that as well, but these are important aspects of the examination. Um, at the same time, you may look for signs of pregnancy, so there may be what are known as stretch marks or stri gravidarum. Um, there may be scars, and those scars may be tucked away beneath the hairline or within the umbilicus, and so you have to spend some time and effort looking for those. Now, you may say, well, people know if they've got scars, they will tell you, but occasionally you will have to examine a pregnant woman who's unconscious, and these become very important points. Also, other aspects like scratch marks. The woman may be scratching because she has a disease that you then can ask her about and discover. So examination and just observation um, is very, very important. Once you've done your observations, you need to move on to the examination itself. Um, this can actually be done very quickly and a, and a good student will achieve the um, obstetric examination part you know, within, within a minute very comfortably. Um, and the best thing to do is to be systematic with the examination. So the first thing we do is measure the symphysial fundal height. It's called the symphysial fundal height because it goes from the fundus, uh, symphysis to the fundus of the uterus. Actually, I teach doing the opposite because the fundus is hard to find and once you've found it, you don't want to let go of it. You place the blinded tape measure at zero on the fundus and you measure down to the symphysis without any extraneous pressure that will make your reading incorrect. The number of centimetres equates roughly to the number of weeks gestation, give or take maybe two centimetres, occasionally three, but as long as that's consistent, it's generally normal. The next part, you need to determine the way the baby is lying in the uterus. And usually it's what we call longitudinal, so the head and the bottom um, are essentially above each other. In order to do this, you literally have to grab the baby within the uterus and gently feel down the sides to see if it is lying, literally feel, see if it's lying in, in that manner. Um, at the same time, you can also determine whether the top part, what we call the pole, is hard or softer. So the head will be hard, the bottom will be softer. Usually, towards the end of the third trimester, um, there is a breach presentation, uh, a breach at the top near the fundus so you can feel the bottom, whereas the head um, is lower down, what we call a cephalic presentation. At the same time as determining the uh, presentation, you want to determine how much the head has gone into the pelvis. Essentially, if you can feel most of the head, it's not engaged. If you get the impression that the widest part of the head can't be felt because it's disappeared into the pelvis, it is engaged and that means um, only one or two fifths of the head can be felt above the pelvic brim. If it's not engaged then it may be three fifths, four fifths or five fifths. Five fifths you can literally get beneath the head and blot it away from the pelvis and you have to make a judgement of what that means. So we've determined the lie We've determined the presentation, we've determined the engagement, and those are all very important. 
you can also get an idea of how much fluid is around the baby because if there's a lot of fluid you can't actually feel fetal parts, what we call polyhydramnios. If there is very little fluid, that the womb loses its cystic feel, it doesn't have any bounce to it and you, it looks a little bit irregular as the muscle of the uterus lies exactly over the baby. And again that's a subjective judgement but something you ought to be able to pick up. At the same time you get some idea which way the baby's looking, what we call the position. Um, that has some value in terms of working out where to listen to the fetal heart because the anterior shoulder um, is where to put your penard or your auscultation device. Once that's all finished, it is good practice to listen into the baby's heartbeat, place your penard stethoscope or an electronic device like a sonicaid over the anterior shoulder um, and hear the fetal heart rate. Um, at the end of the presentation, um, it, it's a good idea to cover the woman back up or at least offer that she can do it herself or help her. Um, make sure she's back in a comfortable position and very important, explain to her that what you found is normal and that there are no concerns. And invite questions from her um, in case she got worried. Also good practice is keep an eye on her face at all times. So when you're doing the examination, make an effort to watch her expression and if she's looking confused, or anxious at any time, stop and ask what the problems are and invite during the examination that, you know, are you okay? Does she want you to stop at any time? Just to make sure that um, you're not overstepping the mark and so on. At the end, it's a good idea to document or present your findings. Um, in an exam situation, they may ask you to present as you go along, but very often they may just say summarise, so you need to be prepared for both um, when you're being examined in your finals. Um, but it's a good idea to have a very systematic view of it.